to get the latest we can cross over to Jerusalem now to speak to reporter Jordana Miller. Uh, Jordana, uh, first of all, maybe we'll start with looking at this claim from Israel that it says it's killed Hamas leaders. Uh, what more can you tell us about that and indeed the impact it would have if it proves true? Well, Israel is claiming that it killed a, a number of top Hamas commanders, uh, ones that were part of Hamas's general staff and uh, uh, fighters that were close to the military chief, Mohammed Adef. Now, uh, Hamas has only recognized that one of those uh, top commanders has indeed been killed. Uh, so we don't have more confirmation from the, from Hamas. But uh, if true, uh, this is a serious blow for the military a wing of Hamas. Uh, this, these are people who are extremely close, as I said, with the military chief, uh, who is certainly in uh, deep, deep hiding. Uh, and, and this is one of the... Uh, goals of the Israeli military operation in Gaza. Uh, and they got to that goal, we have to say, rather quickly in this escalation, uh, where they are now trying to carry out targeted assassinations uh, on these leaders. They're also going after uh, what they believe are uh, military headquarters for uh, intelligence, for rocket uh, uh, production, uh, and that has led them to take down at least three uh, high-rise buildings, either uh, in totality or in part, uh, and, and that has uh, been devastating for Gazans, even though the Israelis wait, uh, you know, and warn the uh, residents uh, and people to evacuate, uh, as you said, uh, the death toll there in Gaza, 69, including uh, at least, we believe, 14 minors. And yet, the Jordana, we're hearing that rocket fire and air raids, air raids continuing this Thursday. That's right. Uh, there's already been uh, six rounds of sirens in the south of Israel. Um, you know, the, 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 that's the area covers about 600,000 Israelis that are essentially sleeping uh, and spending their days close to their bomb shelters now. Um, the uh, Israeli army estimates that now about 1,500 rockets have been fired since this conflict began on Monday night with those initial uh, rockets fired at Jerusalem. Uh, and of course, yesterday we saw those barrages reached Tel Aviv and their suburbs. Uh, and, and Israel does expect that there will be more uh, fire on Tel Aviv. The uh, international airport, Ben Gurion, has just announced that some uh, uh, flights will be diverted today to another uh, air uh, strip landing, another airport nearby, um, because of fears that uh, today the fighting uh, or the rocket fire will continue. And yet neither Israel or Hamas backing down clearly, but US President Joe Biden has voiced some hope after talks with Benjamin Netanyahu. Here, first of all, is a listen to Joe Biden on that issue. Israel has a right to defend itself when you have thousands of rockets flying into your territory. But uh, I had a, a conversation for a while with, a, with the uh, Prime Minister of Israel, and uh, I think that uh, my hope is that we'll see uh, this coming to conclusion sooner than later. Well, Jordana, Biden speaking there to Netanyahu, not as though, as far as we know, uh, to the Palestinian side. Are there any reactions to that where you are? We're also hearing that the U.S. is sending an envoy to the region. That's right. Uh, listen, I think this is the first real test for the Biden administration here in the Middle East. And, um, you know, they're getting into this uh, late in the game. Uh, and uh, it is a hard lesson for the White House that things here can escalate uh, at a at a lightning pace. Um, uh, you know, there are many people here who are already saying that President Biden should have been involved uh, days ago when, when there were riots and, and protests were breaking out here in Jerusalem at the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, now he's sending an envoy, Hadi Amar, uh, who is essentially his uh, envoy for Palestinian uh, and Israeli affairs. Uh, we'll see if he can make any headway at pulling the Israelis uh, and the uh, and Hamas uh, back from the brink uh, of a war. Um, so far, we're not hearing any talk of a ground invasion into Gaza, which would really uh, dramatically uh, change this picture. 
Um, we'll have to wait and see. The Egyptians are also working uh, on uh, ceasefire efforts. They're supposed to have a delegation come uh, and arrive today in the Gaza Strip. Uh, we'll see if there is any headway that can be made. Now, Jordana, apart from the rocket fire and the air raids, uh, the other violence being seen across Israel, clashes ongoing between Arabs and Jews. Uh, let's listen, first of all, to what Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu had to say about that. לאזרחי ישראל אני אומר, זה לא מעניין אותי בכלל אם אדם שלכם רותח, הוא רותח, זה לא מעניין. אתם לא יכולים לקחת את החוק לידיים. אתם לא יכולים לבוא ולקחת אזרח ערבי פשוט ולנסות לעשות לו לינץ'. שום דבר לא מצדיק לינץ' של ערבים ביהודים, ושום דבר לא מצדיק לינץ' של יהודים בערבים. אנחנו לא נקבל את זה. זה לא אנחנו. Pretty clear call for Cam on that front, Georgiana. How widespread is that type of violence? What more can you tell us? Well, I think this is one. This has been one of the most uh, surprising uh, outcomes of this uh, conflict between Israel and Hamas. That here within Israel, uh, like wildfire, uh, clashes between Jewish and Arab residents have spread in many, many mixed uh, towns and cities in uh, Bat Yam, uh, in Akko, in Haifa, uh, just to name a few. Uh, and these, this is the kind of um, civil unrest that we haven't seen really since the last uh, intifada, uh, you know, almost you know, more than two decades ago. Uh, so it is very disconcerting. Uh, last night, there were mobs that tried to beat up uh, an Arab uh, driver, pull him out of his car uh, in the city of Batyam. And in the city of Akko, there was an Arab mob that tried to pull a Jewish driver out of his car and beat him up. Both of those uh, Israelis, uh, one Arab and one Jew, are in serious condition today uh, in the hospital. Uh, the prime minister there calling on Israelis uh, of all uh, backgrounds and not to take the law in their hands. Uh, having said that, you know, it, there is some irony here, given that the prime minister has often demonized Israeli Arabs for his own uh, political ends. Uh, so that is not lost on some here. Uh, nonetheless, uh, you know, Israel has decided to send more and more border police uh, into these uh, towns, and um, it feels a little bit like martial law, though we're not there yet. Uh, you mentioned their political ends, uh, Jordana. The, this conflict is said to be freezing talks by members of Israelis' opposition who were trying to form a coalition in order to replace Netanyahu. That's right. That, that's correct. Right now, all talks by uh, Yair Lapid, the centrist and rival of Netanyahu, who has the mandate to form a government, all his efforts put together a government are on hold right now. Uh, that doesn't mean that Netanyahu suddenly has a chance to stay in power. Uh, he doesn't have the mandate. There's no reports of anyone, uh, you know, of on the right uh, wing who abandoned him. There's no reports they're going to suddenly join him. And it's worth noting that many of his critics uh, on the right really uh, came down on him for failing to solve the Gaza problem and the rocket problem. So this is not going to bring them any closer together. Jordana Miller in Jerusalem, thanks very much indeed for bringing us all that insight.